Welcome back. Well, joining me this afternoon is Liberal MP Paul Fletcher and Labor MP Steve Georgianis. Thank you both very much for your company. Good afternoon. Yeah. Pleasure. Thank you. First uh, to the Gonski education reforms. It looks very unlikely that WA will sign up to these reforms at this, ca uh, this, uh, this time, certainly with the current plan before uh, uh, Colin pa Barnett. Uh, Steve Georgianis, can we really have an education system where different states are funded differently? Well, look, what we're seeing is posturing by some of the premiers around the country. Um, what Mr Barnett will have to explain is why he's refusing extra money that will go into education to ensure that every child gets the education that they deserve. Now, you know, there's millions, 14 point something billion dollars going into uh, the Gonski uh, into education, and it's very important that uh, these premiers do sign up to it because it's the future of our Australian education and the future of our children here in Australia. Paul Fletcher, do you think the opposition should unwind any deal if it doesn't include all of the states? Uh, well, I think it's a bit premature to uh, be commenting on that until we know how the uh, final arrangements are sorted out or not sorted out between the states and the Commonwealth. But the key point is when Steve talks about extra money going in, bear in mind that a third of the money is required to come from the states. And on a net basis, the Commonwealth is actually taking more out of the education system with these Gonski changes than it's putting in. And what it's doing is it's taking a lot of money out of the tertiary education system. And so the net amount from the Commonwealth that is going in is actually negative. In other words, it's taking more out of the education system at a Commonwealth level than is being put in. So it's largely been engineered to secure a headline, but when you look at the details, the details just don't stack up. Mr. Steve Georgianis, I'm sure you'd want to respond to that. I certainly do, and that's not correct. What we saw uh, over the Howard years was uh, the uh, proposals to cut from higher education. Uh, we've seen from 2007 when Labor came to government an extra 145,000 places, uh, extra money going into tertiary education. Tertiary education uh, will continue to grow. Uh, it'll continue to be funded. Uh, it'll just continue to be funded a little bit slower than what we currently had planned. Uh, but we know that putting money into uh, our primary school sector, our secondary school sector, across all sectors of education is extremely important. And an extra $14.5 billion into education will secure the future of Australia and ensure that every child, every single child reaches those standards to make us one of the top five countries in the world when it comes to education. And if we don't achieve that, uh, well then we'll fall behind. If we do what the opposition has been claiming or wants us to do, and that is to continue with the current model of funding, we'll find ourselves behind by $5.5 billion uh, very soon in the, in the future because of indexation. OK, well, we heard from the, the Swinburne University Vice-Chancellor Bill Scales in the Financial Review this morning. He thinks that rather than cut university funding, we should be getting rid of car subsidies. Paul Fletcher, what do you make of that? Well, I think let's just focus on the fact that what we have here is an, uh, what's purported to be an increase in funding from the federal government for the education system overall. In fact, when you look at the net impact on the overall yes, sure, education you, you system. You have made that point. You did make that point in the previous answer. I just want to ask you directly about, about this comparison between the huge subsidies that go into the car industry and uh, the cuts that this Labor government is planning to make to universities. Well, it's a matter for people in different sectors to make arguments about how their sector should do against others. The, the job of the opposition is to hold the government to account on the details of its education policy. And what we have here is something that is promised at a headline level as being an extra $14 billion for education. But in fact, the net amount of money from the federal government is actually negative. All the new money uh, into education in total is going to come from the state governments if they agree to what the Commonwealth has asked them to do and the funding that's going into primary and secondary schools from the Commonwealth will be more than offset by the amount that it is withdrawing from other programs across the entire education sector. Well, the Trade and Tertiary Education Minister, Craig Emerson, had an accusation that he made on Sky News this morning. Let's hear it. At the ANU, there's, a, uh, there's an email going around from the Acting Vice-Chancellor or Deputy Vice-Chancellor telling students that they're going to lose their assist the um, start-up scholarship. doesn't tell them that it, and no, student, no student at that university will lose the start-up scholarship. 
Steve Georgianis, uh, the government at war with vice chancellors. What are we to make of that message when you're trying to be the defenders of education? Look, um, vice chancellors uh, will defend their patch, uh, no doubt. But can I just say um, I disagree with what Paul Fletcher just said. There is an extra $14.5 billion going into education. In my state alone, there's $600 million. This is extra money that's going in to ensure the future of generations of Australian. On the statements made by the universities today, uh, I would disagree with it. I think the car industry is extremely important, especially in my state of South Australia, and I wouldn't be supporting uh, those funding cuts to that industry. We know that for every job on the production line, there's another three manufacturing jobs created. Uh, we know that the spin-off as well in other sectors, service industry, are huge and it would be devastating to South Australia and to the South Australian economy if we start talking about taking money away from these industries. It is an important okay. part of our economy and I still, well, lots of us want to see it grow and continue to grow. Steve Georgianis, Paul Fletcher, unfortunately we are out of time, but thanks for joining us this afternoon. And thanks for your company. We'll have the latest on the Boston Blasts coming up right after this. On